Money has long been an inspiration for many artists. Pink Floyd called it the root of all evil. Wu-Tang Clan rapped, cash rules everything around me. But superstars aren't just happy with singing about money or making money by singing. They strive for more. Sometimes they move economies with their vocal cords. And the biggest example of this is Taylor Swift, the iconic American singer. She's one of the highest paid entertainers in the world and she is on a world tour right now. The Eras Tour. It is set to earn a record $1 billion in ticket sales. And if you think this is a big number, well, think again, because this is just the ticket revenue. Concerts make money in many ways. People spend on merchandise, accommodation, travel. And Swifties, or the fans of Taylor Swift, spend about $1,300 on average. So if you add everything, her tour could generate $5 billion. That's right, $5 billion. That's more than the GDP of many countries. And this may be the best case scenario, artists helping with economic growth. In some cases, they also push up inflation. Last month, we saw this in Sweden. The American star singer Beyonce kicked off her world tour in Sweden in the month of May. It caused a huge influx of visitors. Hotel and restaurant prices suddenly rose. And the result was this. Sweden's inflation surged. They called it Bayflation. It sounds bizarre, but Bayflation and the swift lift are only part of the norm, which brings us to something called the concert economy. It means exactly what it sounds like. It tells us how concerts affect economic growth and inflation, and it is seen across the world because artists are so much more than just singers and songwriters. They're an economic phenomenon, an obsession, an industry unto themselves sometimes. So they're hugely lucrative tu tours, benefit economies. And don't be mistaken, this is not a new concept, a new trend. In 1964, the Beatles practically rescued the British economy. The UK had a negative balance between imports and exports. Then the Beatles went on tour. They earned income in dollars, the Deutsche Mark, and the yen. Thanks to international ticket sales, royalties, and even appearance fees, and the British economy got a boost. You see, the concert economy is all about exporting music. Exhibit A, K-pop. It has become a global phenomenon, and now it contributes $10 billion to the South Korean economy. Boy band BTS alone accounts for about $4 billion. And exporting music is especially great for smaller economies. Sweden literally awarded ABBA for their contribution to the country's exports. And many say U2 was one of Ireland's top three exports in the 90s. And as we speak, it's the summer of concerts. Beyonce and Bruce Springsteen are reigning over Europe. Taylor Swift has taken over the US and Australia. In some parts of the world, it seems like everyone is going to a concert. But if you're elsewhere, like in some African or Asian nations, you're probably suffering from serious FOMO. So why don't global music stars tour certain countries as much? Well, there are multiple reasons, like the lack of great venues. Experts say every major European and American city has a minimum 50 venues for performances. This is where artists can just plug in and play. In countries like India, that is not the case. So when artists come here, they have to bring their own high-tech gear. And then there are other reasons, like high promoter costs, red tapeism from government authorities, and the lack of a large fan base. But to many fans, these factors don't really matter, because those who can will travel far and wide to attend these concerts. They were really expensive. They were like 5,000 high. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yes. And the plane tickets after that, because, well, I had the tickets, so I had to get there. The plane tickets cost uh, about 6,000. I actually didn't get the ticket. My friends did because there were like 30,000 people in the queue for Edinburgh. Um, so it was kind of a team effort. So we got the tickets, they were incredibly expensive, but I was willing to pay for it. I was willing to travel six hours plus on a train to get there. Fact of the matter, money is funny in this rich man's world. But even in this material world, music hails supreme, it seems. And crowd-pulling concerts often pull up entire economies too.